We're a long ways away from the inception of the bridal shower when women historically gathered to shower the bride with gifts for her new home. How you celebrate your shower is entirely up to you, and the good news is that you can go way outside the bounds of tradition. Let's give the old school shower some creative modern twists. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Kara, and I'm here to help you streamline and simplify your wedding plans with straightforward, down-to-earth advice on planning the wedding of your dreams. Let's be real. There are some really juicy secrets that the wedding industry does not want you to know, and a little bit of insider knowledge could save you thousands of dollars. Come behind the scenes with me to unveil three wedding industry secrets by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash secret. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there. Welcome to today's show. And thank you, as always, so very much for spending this time with me today. We are going to dive right in. Today's conversation all about bridal showers and wedding showers is going to be split into two parts. First, we're going to do a general overview of showers, who, what, when, and why we have them. And then in the second part of today's show, let's get really specific on some super unique ways that you can celebrate your upcoming marriage with your closest friends and family. And I'm also going to review shower gift etiquette in the second part of today's show. Now, I realize that in many cases, you don't plan your own shower, so do feel free to forward this episode along to your bridesmaids, your mom, your sisters, cousins, anyone who's helping you with the wedding plans. And I also want to note before we really dive in that throughout today's conversation, I'm going to cover both bridal showers, which are traditionally just women, and wedding showers, which can include men, women, whoever you'd like to be there. And we might be flipping back and forth a bit. So bear with me and know that bridal shower and wedding shower are both interchangeable for today's episode. It's important that I cover both since I know that number one, many of you listening are not brides. And number two, lots of you will naturally want to celebrate with everyone and not just have a women only shower. So wedding shower and bridal shower, of course, there are some distinct differences, but for our conversation, just take them as interchangeably. And with that said, to kick things off, I'm going to review what is a bridal shower? Why do what is it? And why do we even celebrate a bridal shower? In a nutshell, historically, a bridal shower is hosted by one or more close friends of the bride to shower her with gifts leading up to her marriage. This is typically a party for the women in the bride's life, including her family and friends, and also family and any close friends from the groom's side of the family. For today's discussion, I'm not too concerned with the history of the bridal shower, what it expresses in terms of gender roles, consumerism. There are any number of social and political issues that can be tied to this tradition. That's an entirely different podcast for another feed and another host to tackle. Let's frame it this way for the rest of our time today. A bridal shower or a wedding shower is a celebration leading up to the wedding when the bride and or groom can celebrate their upcoming marriage with their closest friends and family. To me, that is the most all-inclusive, simple definition, so let's roll with that. Who hosts the shower? Traditionally, a bridal shower is a party planned by the bride's closest friends or female relatives, but you have complete freedom to rewrite the rules and make this a fun and enjoyable part of your engagement. I have a perfect listener question that came in regarding who hosts the shower. The situation is the maid of honor and sister are both really swamped. One is in graduate school and one has a brand new baby. And she feels terrible at the thought of them having to plan and pay for a shower. So she told them not to even worry about it, but she does still want to celebrate some kind of shower with friends and family. And she asks, is it weird for me to plan and host my own shower? Not at all. Anyone can plan and host the bridal shower, including the bride herself. People plan their own birthday parties all the time, and I see this as no different. 
Next, let's touch on who is invited, which we've already kind of covered, but let's dive in a little deeper. For a traditional bridal shower, again, you'll find the bride's closest friends and female relatives, and then also select women from the groom's side. I would encourage you to invite your closest family, friends, co-workers, anyone else who you would like to participate. Here in the United States, the bachelorette party is typically the chance for you and your younger female friends and relatives to kind of go out and celebrate. The bridal shower is a good opportunity to bring in all the family. So all of the generations are coming together to celebrate this event. And again, I can't say this enough times, this definitely does not have to be a party for just women. You can easily call it a wedding shower and invite anyone and everyone closest to you. We will go into some specific logistics of a co-ed shower more throughout today's show. When should the shower take place? Any time in the four to six weeks or so leading up to the wedding is really good timing, although that can definitely be altered to fit your schedules however needed. This ties into another really good listener question that you might relate to on hosting multiple showers. I'll read this one verbatim because it really communicates the issue so well. Hey, Cara, I know my coworkers want to plan a shower for my fiance and I. Same with the women from my church. My mom and sister want to do a mini bridal shower, long weekend trip together, and then another shower for all of my female relatives. I feel really bad saying anything, but with everything going on leading up to the wedding, the showers, and a bachelorette party, I'm feeling really overwhelmed and exhausted just thinking about it. Mm Mm-hmm. This is wedding overwhelm at its finest. Take a deep breath. (laughs) Do your very best to be patient and feel grateful and feel loved that All of these people are so excited to celebrate you. And let's talk about how we can time things out to make this feel less overwhelming. First of all, you always have the option of letting coworkers or church friends or whoever it is, whatever group it is, you can always let them know that you do not expect them to throw a shower at all. If they insist, then it's very sweet of them to want to celebrate you and a really good alternative to a big shower that can feel overwhelming and kind of just a bigger deal than you want to make it. A good alternative to that would be simply having lunch together at your favorite restaurant. This can happen any time leading up to the wedding and it's a really small time commitment for both you and your coworkers or church friends or whatever group it is. Now, the trip with your mom and your sisters, can this happen way before the wedding? Maybe you could wrap it into a dress shopping expedition. So for example, you could hop into the car, take a drive to a neighboring town or a little resort place that you've wanted to visit for a while. And then while you're there, maybe you could go to a couple of dress boutiques and try on some dresses. So let's see if we can get that trip on the calendar months before the wedding so that we're not crowding things. And I definitely agree with you that if we wait for everything to take place in the four weeks before the wedding, you are 100% it's certain that you are going to get burned out. So this trip sounds like the perfect thing to push way out, give yourself plenty of space at the end. And another option here might be to suggest that with everything else going on, it would be much more enjoyable to take this trip together after the wedding when all the dust has settled and there aren't a zillion things going on. So to wrap things up for the co-worker and the church ladies parties, keep those very small and simple, go out for lunch or brunch, keep it real simple and space them out in the month's advance. The trip with your mom and your sisters, try to either have that happen months before the wedding as a dress shopping expedition or see if they're open to pushing that until after the wedding when there's less going on. That said, the larger, more traditional bridal shower with your female relatives, that can be scheduled in the more traditional time frame of four to six weeks ahead of the wedding and give some cushion time between that shower and your bachelorette party And I think by spacing everything out, you can kind of take a deep breath and not feel like it's going to be such a time crunch in those final months and weeks. 
And I have one more listener question that I want to share with you, which is, do I have to have a bridal shower? This listener writes, I've been to plenty of bridal showers in the past, and to be honest, I think they're pretty boring. I would really prefer not to have a bridal shower, and how can I let my bridesmaids and family know this without hurting their feelings? Do you have any alternatives to sitting around drinking punch and playing silly games? Why, yes, I do have some really fun alternatives to share, along with bridal shower gift etiquette and much more. I'll be back after a quick break from today's show sponsors. Hello from Susan's Travel Services. Susan and her team know that these are unique and changing times, and they are here for you and walking beside you. Susan's Travel Services is a full-service travel agency that's been in business for 26 years. A note from Susan... We've gone through difficult times before, and we will walk with you through this. Susan is busy booking trips into 2022 and can't wait to start your journey with you. The best part? Susan's honeymoon planning services are free. That's right. There is no charge for all of their knowledge, services, and expertise. Susan simply wants to build a meaningful relationship with you and your partner to make your dream honeymoon come true. Email Susan and tell her you heard this ad and get $50 off your honeymoon. Tell a friend and get a $50 referral fee if they mention your name at the time of booking. Email Susan at Susan'sTravelServices.com for free honeymoon planning services and get $50 off when you book with Susan and her team. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Generation Tux, and they see a couple of big problems with suit and tuxedo rentals for your wedding day. Ditch the crowded formal wear store and forget about having to pick up everything the day before your wedding. In a day and age when we can have literally anything delivered to our doorstep with the push of a button, why not your wedding day suits? Generation Tux gets it and their service solves all of it. Here's how it works. Visit GenerationTux.com where you can build your look online right from the comfort of your couch. Generation Tux has developed a free home try-on program for grooms. Experience style and color from the comfort of your home months before your big day. The best part is that everything arrives on the doorstep of all the party members 14 days before the wedding, and they even offer on-demand fit consultations. That way, if there are any fit issues at all, there's plenty of time to take care of it. At Generation Tux, everyone's invited. Earn a free suit or tuxedo rental with five paid members, or even keep your suit or tux when seven members check out. The choice is yours. This is a huge value. Save time, save some money, and most importantly, save your sanity by checking these guys out at www.generationtux.com and use promo code WEDPOD for 10% off the entire groom's party. It's no secret that the way we plan and celebrate weddings has changed a lot in the past couple of months. Thanks to our beautiful friend, technology, we can be with loved ones who we can't see in person, grocery shop from the couch, and work while sunbathing on our front porch. You can also enjoy on-demand wedding planning services anytime, anywhere inside my virtual wedding planning package, The Vault. To sign up for what one Vault member calls a breath of fresh air in the wedding industry, simply visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash V-A-U-L-T. I can't wait to see you there. Okay, we left off with a listener question. To summarize, I would really prefer not to have a bridal shower. How do I let my bridesmaids and family know without hurting their feelings? And do you have any alternatives to sitting around drinking punch and playing silly games? Okay, let's take this one piece at a time. First off, if you really don't want any bridal shower or celebration of any kind leading up to the wedding day, then I'd be pretty shocked if you're still listening this far into today's show. However, if you do feel that way, that's totally fine. You do not have to have a bridal shower. There's no law that says you have to have one. So take a deep breath, 
release that weight off your shoulders. If you don't want to have the celebration, then explain that candidly and very straightforwardly to your loved ones. Now, with that said, let's turn our conversation to some alternative bridal shower ideas, two really fun ways that you could celebrate your shower minus the punch and the silly games. Forget sitting around someone's house for brunch, making wedding dresses out of toilet paper and sharing recipe cards. Let's launch into some very specific ideas for hosting a really unique shower that kind of goes outside the traditional format that you may know and have been a part of and are feeling like, meh, let's kind of do something a little different. So the first general theme I have to share with you is to plan much more of an experience, something that you're all sharing together, you're actively involved in, you're doing this experience together rather than just sitting around and eating food and playing games. Ask your guests that in lieu of gifts, shower gifts, your loved ones participate in this fun experience together. Now, what experience could that be? I'm going to rattle off some ideas, but please let your imagination, your location, and your own favorite activities really be the guide here. And I will also post a recap of this on Instagram stories and in an email to my email subscribers. If you want to get on that list, you can head to weddingplanningpodcast.co, sign up for emails, And to find us on Instagram, look for at wedding planning podcast, all one word, super easy to remember. So let's go through this list of some experiences that you could do with your friends and family in lieu of a more quote traditional shower. And I'll say quickly here before we jump into these ideas that in our current state of social distancing, not every activity will be available in every area as of the air date of today's show. So you'll want to make adjustments accordingly based on your circumstances and based on when you're listening. In other words, if you're listening in real time as of May 2020, this list is going to play out differently than if you're coming across this show in the future in February of 2021. All right, with that said, hot air balloon rides, super fun, really adventurous. You could book a sip and paint. These are where you basically drink wine and paint. It's pretty fun. I've done it before and it would be a perfect thing for a shower candle making classes, floral arranging class, you could paint pottery, you could all take a cooking class together. Mixology is really big in the cocktail space, so you could do a mixology lesson with a bartender at a cocktail lounge. You could go on an adventurous hike that you've always wanted to do. If you're near any water, paddle yoga is really fun out here in San Diego. Book a paddle yoga session or just a yoga session in general at a studio that you've wanted to try out. You could do surf lessons together. And then, of course, my very favorite go wine tasting. Book a couple of vineyards close in your area and hire a car and go out for the day and do wine tasting and have a really nice lunch together. I could literally go on and on and on, but the most important point here is to get your mind off that traditional format of everyone sitting around in someone's living room and get out in the world and experience something really fun together. It is so energizing and stimulating and exhilarating and fun to get out and do something together. Depending on what you think up, it may cost a little bit more money than a traditional shower. But the point again that I mentioned at the beginning of this portion is that your gift is people participating in this experience together. So you're not asking them to pay $50 to do paddle yoga and also expecting them to give you a gift. The gift is the participation, and this is just a really fun way to celebrate and make some memories with those close to you. And my second very general suggestion for kind of mixing up the traditional shower, and this format is gonna work really well if you're looking to do a co-ed experience. Any of the things I just mentioned before, by the way, would also be awesome for a co-ed experience. They would work totally fine. The second general idea is to forget the daytime shower and just go ahead and treat this like an evening party. You could rent a room at your favorite bar or restaurant or celebrate at someone's home. Give the evening a theme, and I'll illustrate a 
pretty specific example for you, but feel free to use your imagination and go with your favorites. You could select an Italian theme and visit an Italian grocery store, plan a really easy meal of fresh pasta, or choose a pre-made favorite like lasagna or ravioli. Ask your guests to bring a salami and or a cheese that they love and a bottle of Italian wine, and then share everything on a huge appetizer board. You can play music, play heads up or catchphrase, share stories from past years, share stories about how you met. You don't need to have games or planned activities or anything besides you and your friends and family enjoying a really fun evening together. If you're listening to today's show and thinking, oh, I really love these ideas, but I know that my bridesmaids are the ones planning the shower, forward this episode to them with a short note to check out some really unique bridal shower ideas. It's kind of awkward to tell someone planning a party for you exactly what to do or how to plan it. So use your relationship as your guide, but definitely forward this episode on just to get everyone kind of inspired and thinking outside the box on how you could plan your shower. And let's wrap up today's show with another big question, which is about gifts and gift etiquette. Everyone has a different opinion on this, and it's impossible for me to tell you what the quote right thing to do is, but here are some points for you to consider with respect to shower gifts. The first is, do I register for my shower gifts? And the answer is maybe. I personally don't feel comfortable with the idea of a separate shower registry, but lots of folks do create one, and if that feels like a good option for you, then by all means, go ahead. This can fit if you're having a humongous bridal shower. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law, I think she had hundred. I mean, 200 people at her bridal shower. So in that case, if you have a humongous pool of people, it might make sense to create a separate registry. But again, use your personal comfort level. There's really no right or wrong answer. A variation instead of having a completely separate registry would be to include some items on your wedding gift registry that are at a variety of price points. And that way your guests could easily visit the wedding registry and there would be things on there that could double as a shower gift. And then you can just point people towards your general gift registry if they need ideas. Another common way to handle shower gifts is to choose a theme and ask guests to contribute to that specific theme. So for example, a lingerie party where the bride asks for underwear. (laughs) This sounds kind of strange to say out loud, but we've all been to a bridal shower where the bride gets sexy undies. Another theme, gourmet cooking, kitchen items, a stock the bar party where each guest brings a bottle of wine or champagne or liquor, etc. And then to tie this gift etiquette piece back into our experience shower ideas from earlier. Again, if you're asking your guests to participate and pay for an experience like a hot air balloon ride, paddle yoga, then that is the gift. And I would indicate that in some way on the invitations. So for example, you could write on the invitation, no gifts, please. Your participation in paddleboard yoga is the best present ever. People may very well still gift you something small, which is fine, but be sensitive about asking guests to pay for something like the experience and also on top of that, feel obligated to give you a gift. And last thing here, if you are hosting the experience and you're the one picking up the tab and paying for everyone to participate, then leaving your registry information on the invitation is just fine. Bottom line, I could talk on and on and on about what feels most comfortable to me, but please do what feels most comfortable to you. I hope you loved today's episode and I hope you'll feel free to share it with your loved ones who might be planning a shower or any special event for you in the months leading up to the wedding. If you have any questions, comments, stories to share, I would love to hear them. I've been hanging out on Instagram a lot lately, and you can always find me on our website, which is weddingplanningpodcast.co. You'll see a contact page, and you can also sign up for Wedding Planning Podcast emails and catch up on past episodes while you're there. Thank you again so much for spending this time with me today, and I can't wait till next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. 
For details on any links and resources mentioned in today's show, be sure to take a peek at the show notes on your mobile device. You can also head over to weddingplanningpodcast.co for a complete library of past episodes and to sign up for weekly show notes and resources delivered straight to you via email. Until next time, have a great day, happy planning, and I can't wait to chat again soon. Cheers.